Hi everybody. Today we are going to be covering the last lesson in unit eight. We're going to be talking about angle of elevation and angle of depression. These notes of course can be found on OMHS as well as their key. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to join me in office hours or send me an email. And we'll help get you straightened out. So we are going to be using what we've learned in this unit so far using possibly Pythagorean theorem, using maybe our special right triangles, but especially using our trigonometry to solve problems. So we're just going to turn them into word problems. Um, one thing that you need to know is an angle of elevation. And when I think of an angle of elevation, I think of someone or something looking straight out horizontally. So here's our dude and he's looking straight out horizontally and then he looks up. The angle that's created by that horizontal line and then the line of sight is called the angle of elevation. Okay, so in our first example here, okay, and this person's name is Casey. They cite, Casey cites the top of an 84 foot tall lighthouse at an angle elevation of 58 degrees. If Casey is six feet tall, how far, we're gonna get she, because it's my name. How far is she standing from the base of the lighthouse? Okay, so here we are. Okay, we're gonna sketch a picture. Clearly you don't have to be like a really good artist or anything, or else I'd be in trouble, right? <laughs> All right, here's my lighthouse. So Casey starts by looking out horizontally and then looks up. So that is the angle of elevation right there. And it says the angle of elevation is 58 degrees. If Casey is six feet tall, so this is a little wishful thinking here, I'm not six feet tall. How far is she standing from the base of the lighthouse? So here's the person, here's the base of the lighthouse. That's what we're looking for. Okay. In all of this, I'm hoping that you can see a right triangle. You see it right here? Okay. So the right triangle says, I should, um, says that this is 58 degrees. We are looking for X. I'm missing, oh, 84 tall lighthouse. I knew we were missing something. There you go. The lighthouse is 84 feet. So if the lighthouse is 84 feet and Casey is six feet, that means this is six, then what is this distance here? Well, 84 minus six tells us that this is 78. So in my right triangle, 78. So now I can find X. And we're gonna use trig. So we put an arc on the angle. 78 is opposite, X is adjacent. Maybe somewhere you wanna write Sokotoa. The O and the A is used by tangent. So we all say the tangent of our angle 58 equals the opposite over the adjacent. I like to cross multiply here. X times the tangent of 58 is X tangent 58. And 78 times one is a 78. And now I wanna get X by itself. Tangent of 58 is a number. Although it is ugly, it is a number. So I'm going to divide both sides by the tangent of 58. So the tangent of 58 will cancel. And in my calculator, I'm going to type 78 divided by tangent 58. And it is very important that our calculator is in degree mode here. Rounding to the nearest 10th, we get about 48.7. It was, X was a distance and its unit was feet. So our answer is 48.7 feet. All right, let's try another one. <clears throat> Example two says the angle of elevation from a kicker's foot on a football field to the top of the goal post bars is 17 degrees. So let's draw a picture of our kicker. There he is, and here's the goal post, appropriate for the Super Bowl happening, right? So it says the angle of elevation from the kicker's foot. So that's really what's doing the looking is the kicker's foot. Here's his foot, okay? The foot looks out and then looks up to the top of the goalpost 
and that's 17 degree angle of elevation. He is standing 131 feet from the base of the goalpost. So this is 131 down here. How tall is the goalpost? So how tall is that? So now we have a right triangle. We're looking for its height. We know this bottom side is 131 and this is a 17 degree angle. Well, X is opposite and 31 is adjacent. So it looks like we're using tangent again. So the tangent of our angle 17 is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Cross multiplying here, 131 times tangent 17 is 131 times the tangent of 17. And X times one is X. So now in my calculator, I'm typing 131 times the tangent of 17. And as long as you're in degree mode, we'll get about 40.1. Our units are feet since it's the height. All right, go ahead and try number three. Try number three. Leah's mom is standing at the bottom of the slide on playground, waiting for Leah to slide down. The angle of elevation from the bottom of the slide to the top of the slide is 46 degrees. The slide has a vertical height of nine feet. Can you find the length of the slide? It's okay if you get it wrong. Just try it. Try sketching a picture, put your numbers in your picture, and see if you can use trig to find the length of the slide. Try it now. Hopefully you got the slide was about 12.5 feet. So here's my picture, not you know the greatest drawing in the whole world, but it definitely helps figure out what's going on. We have the slide and here I put Leah at the top. She's gonna come down the slide and here's her mom waiting for her at the bottom. Okay, so the, so the angle of elevation from the bottom of the slide to the top. So here's the bottom of the slide. It looked out and then it looked up. So your angle of elevation was here. It's 46 degrees. It said the slide had a vertical height. Okay, so remember vertical line is the line that goes up and down. That's nine feet. And if we wanted to find the length of the slide, the slide was here. So that's X. Okay, so I redrew that right triangle just with the numbers in it. So we have a nine, an X and a 46. Here's the angle, which means nine is opposite and X is the hypotenuse. So if you're looking at your Soka Toa, the opposite in the hypotenuse is used by sine. So we'll say sine of the angle 46 is equal to nine over X, opposite over hypotenuse. You can think of there's a one in the denominator here, cross multiply, X times sine 46 is X sine 46, and nine times one is nine. The sine of 46 is a number, a very ugly number, but it's a number. So I divide both sides by that ugly number of sine 46. Here they cancel, which is what I wanted, leaving X by itself. And then in the calculator, I'm typing nine divided by sine 46, and you get about 12.5. It's a length, so we give it the unit of feet. Okay, um, I got a little copy paste happy here. We already did this one at the top, so we're just gonna skip down here to number four. <clears throat> it says a dog is standing five feet from the base of a tree. Okay, get ready to watch my horrible art artistry here, but it's all right. Here's a tree. And okay, you're gonna laugh, it's okay, here's a dog. Ooh, okay, he's standing five feet from the base of the tree. Looking up at a cat, oh, I put his head on the wrong side. Okay, he's looking, <laughs> put his head on the other side. Here's my dog. He's looking up at a cat. Okay, now he gets to draw a cat. Give it some more scares. There we go. He's looking up at a cat that has climbed 16 feet into the tree. So up here, 16. What is the angle of elevation? Okay, so he looked out and then he looked up. So what is that angle of elevation? All right, so now we are actually looking for an angle. And remember when the variable is the angle, you're gonna be using some kind of inverse. So it's just to make that right triangle clear, this height is 16, this length is five, and we're looking for this angle. So we have an opposite and an adjacent. So we're gonna use tangent. Tangent of the angle, in this case, that's X, is the opposite over the adjacent. And remember when we learned to find the variable when it's an angle, what you can do is you can take your angle 
and your ratio and flip-flop them as long as you make your function an inverse. So you can invert your angle and your ratio as long as you make your function an inverse. So we're gonna type in our calculator the tangent inverse, the 16 fifths. To the nearest 10th, that makes this angle about 72.6 degrees. And I'm using degrees this time because it's an angle. So that was angle of elevation. And there's also something called angle of depression. You may have already guessed what it is. Angle of elevation is when you look up. Well, angle of depression is when you look down. So here you have your lifeguard dude sitting up on the platform. He looks out and then he looks down. The angle that is formed there is the angle of depression. One of the biggest mistakes that I see students make is they think that this angle here is the angle of depression. No, that's not true. Okay. The angle that's formed by the line of sight and the horizontal, that is the angle of depression. Okay, now what's really important to know about your angle of depression, right? here's your dude looking out and then down, there's the angle of depression. Let's say he's looking at this dude down here. Well, if this dude looks out and then up, his angle of elevation is going to be congruent to this guy's angle of depression. Why? because these are both horizontal lines, which means they're parallel. And that line of sight, that's actually a transversal. We learned that alternate interior angles are congruent. So if you know the angle of depression up here, you know the angle of elevation down here, they have to be congruent. And that's gonna be very helpful here in a second. Okay. So this example says that a lifeguard is sitting on a platform. Okay. Clearly I'm not really good at drawing these things, but here's a lifeguard. He's sitting on a platform looking down at a swimmer in the water. Here's our swimmer in the water. So the lifeguard looks out and looks down. The lifeguard's line of sight is eight feet above the ground. So eight would go here. And the angle of depression is 18. So here's your angle of depression. How far away is the swimmer from the lifeguard? Okay, and this isn't boarded very clearly. It wants to know how far away is the swimmer from the lifeguard horizontally. So this distance right here. Okay, if you ever are not sure, you're always free to ask. Okay, so in our triangle, we have a right triangle. We're looking for this distance. We know this is eight and this angle up here is 18. Not this one, this is not 18. It's the angle of depression. So 18 has to go here. Okay, but we know the alternate interior angles are congruent. So if the angle of depression is 18 above, it means the angle of elevation here is 18. Now I can say, oh, angle opposite adjacent ah, tangent. So the tangent of 18 is equal to eight over a, or not a x, right? Because that's what really the variable was. I guess you could use a, it wouldn't really matter. I like to put a one here and cross multiply. x times the tangent of 18 equals eight. I need x by itself. So to get rid of tangent 18, I'm going to divide both sides by the tangent of 18. Those will cancel, leave me just x. And in my calculator, I'm going to type eight divided by tangent 18. I get 24.6. Our units are feet still. Okay, let's look at number six. A pilot in a helicopter spots a landing pad below. All right, here's my helicopter. Not the greatest helicopter ever. All right, that's a terrible helicopter, but okay. There's my helicopter. <laughs> um, angle of depression is 73 degrees. So the helicopter looks out and then down and he sees this landing pad. There it is. The angle of depression was 73 degrees. In the horizontal distance, so horizontal is here, distance is 1200 feet. 
what is the altitude? Altitude is his vertical height. So we're gonna find the altitude. So in my right triangle, we're looking for the altitude. We know this distance is 1200 and we know the angle of depression is 73. Alternate interior angles would tell me that this angle is also 73. Knowing that I can say X is my opposite and 12 is my adjacent. There's a lot of tangents in these types of problems. Don't always assume it's always gonna be tangent. It just happens to be like that for a lot of them. So the tangent of our angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Cross multiply. Well, X times one is X and in our calculator we'll type 1200 times the tangent of 73. So we get its altitude is about 3,925 feet. I'm gonna do one more with you and then I'm gonna let you do the last one on your own. In number seven, we have building A and building A is 480 feet tall. Here it is. And then we have building B. Building B is 654 feet tall. It says the angle of depression from the top building B to the top of building A. So depression means it looked out and then it looked down. So the angle of depression is 42 degrees. How far apart are the buildings? So this distance that we're gonna find it. So in my right triangle, let's see, I could find this distance right here. Right, I'm gonna subtract 654 minus 480. That'll tell me the difference in their height. It's 174. So in my right triangle, that would go here. I'm looking for that horizontal distance. And if the angle of depression is 42, it means this angle of elevation is 42. So now I have an opposite and an adjacent, and we're gonna play with tangent again. Tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Cross multiply x times tangent 42 is x times tangent 42. 174 times one is 174. Divide both sides by the tangent of 42 to cancel that bad boy out. And in your calculator, you'll type 174 divided by tangent 42. For the nearest tenth, you should get 193.2. Our units are still feet because that was a distance that we were looking for. All right, in number eight, we have Zach. He's standing at the top of a lookout tower and he sees a water fountain below. The lookout tower is 75 feet tall and the angle of depression is 28 degrees. What's the horizontal distance between Zach and that water fountain? Don't get too caught up on your picture, okay? Like it should take you 30 seconds to draw the picture. It doesn't have to be pretty. The sketch is merely just to see how the right triangle is set up. So you know how to set up your equation and solve for that missing distance. Go ahead and try number eight now. Let's see how you do. All right, hopefully you've got 141.1 feet. So here's my picture in all of its artistic glory. We have Zach here at the top of his watchtower, 75 feet off the ground. Zach looks straight out and then he looks down and he sees this water fountain. His angle of depression is 28 degrees. We wanna know the horizontal distance. So I call that X. To make that right triangle a little more clear, I redrew that right triangle out here. Here's the 75 and the X. The angle of depression is 28, which means the angle of elevation down here is 28 by alternate interior angles. 75 is opposite, X is adjacent. So we're looking at tangent again. So the tangent of 28 equals 75 over X. And after you cross multiply and divide by the tangent of 28, you'll be typing 75 divided by tangent 28 in your calculator. All right, so nothing truly new here just two new definitions of angle of elevation and angle of depression, and using them to sketch some pictures to figure out how to solve. Again, your sketches don't have to be perfect. Clearly, mine are not. They're just there to help figure out how to set it up. If you would like extra practice, there is some practice problems available to you in OMHS. And if that's still not enough, let me know. If we can find some more practice for you. Don't forget to do your exit ticket and your attendance word was given in the play posit. So I hope you have a lovely day and please don't hesitate to come ask me questions. I'm happy to help. This is my favorite unit.
I love doing these kinds of problems. Have a great day, everyone.